ones because it's only the vapor that goes. But if you're using steeping, you can distill your gin as many times as you want. So all mm -hmm. the four bobes undergo the same, they undergo the same uh, process. I think the reason why I was asking is because we have all these different categories of gin and perhaps the question would be, where does Bombay fall under? Like the different uh, variations. So into, um, is it the okay, same? So yeah. Is it in the same? Brian? Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Is that, what, is that your question? I mean, like the different variations. So you have the London Dry and then we have the New Western style and then we have all this other craft. Okay. Like the yeah. different categories. Does Bombay have a product expression for each of the new categories or is it just the same London Dry but enhanced? So I'd say maybe say for the, the Bramble Bombay, that would fall in the new, in the new, you know, the new, the new category or the Western, the new Western, yeah, they call the new Western gins. So I think mm -hmm. that would fall under that because, you know, of the flavor also, the color, it has gone out of what gin is in terms of, you know, it's a clear spirit, so that is a colored spirit, but it's still made the same way as a London Dry, but in terms of, how it is because it is this it is different compared to compared to how we know Bombay to taste. So I'll say that will be more of a new Western, but a London dry new Western. So I'll say it's two it's two categories uh, brought together to make that. But the rest are London dry jeans and London dry gin um, it does not necessarily mean that the gin comes from London. If you see that the gin because you'll see um, the jeans, the jeans, even the local ones, yeah. you'll see that they're written London dry gin. Okay. This is, yeah. yeah, this is a process or a method of making gin, which was passed in the in in Europe back in the in the late 1700s, which is how to make uh, your gin. It's a process of making gin. So as opposed to London dry gin, there is compound gin, there is distilled gin, and like you're saying, there's the new uh, the new Western gins. Like there is Plymouth gin, there is Geneva gin. So those are different methods of making gin. But the most popular way is uh, the London uh, the London dry gin. Someone is saying Bombay Bramble can be classified as a distilled gin. Do you it agree with also, that? Uh, yes, it can also be classified as a distilled gin as well because well, of, of the process that it takes in terms of uh, the infusion of uh, the infusion of uh, the fruity flavors to it. Question I always because get from done after. Yeah? Question I always get from bartenders is how do you sell one variation against the other? So if in, you're in a bar and you have, let's say, London Dry, you have Stannis, what do you say to a client? To accept, uh, I mean, sorry? like you want to sell, for example, star over the London Dry. Oh, say, not star over London Dry or star over Bombay Sapphire. Or star over Bombay Sapphire, for example. So the thing with okay, first of all, uh, star star is more premium. Taste wise, uh, between Bombay Sapphire and star, star is much soft or much smoother in terms of taste. Okay. It does. It doesn't have that because the most predominant uh, botanical say in Bombay Sapphire, it will be you'll feel of course the juniper, the coriander, uh, yeah, the coriander and the lemon peels, yeah. So those yes. are, will be the predominant uh, flavors from this, the ones that you can pick out. So this will come off. Bombay Sapphire will come off as more citrusy, or you'll feel more of the citrus notes on it as opposed to. Uh, South Bombay. South Bombay is more subtle. Like um, if you taste South Bombay, South Bombay comes off as as balanced. Like there is there there are no extreme extreme uh, flavor notes to it. It's smooth okay. and more delicate compared to Bombay Sapphire. So uh, one more uh, one question that guys also ask: What okay. defines the quality of a gin? I think it's the production. It's the production process. Because if you look, most genes are almost kind of like made the same way. So if you, mm -hmm. oh, if, because someone will say it's written a London dry gene and they have this other gene that is much, uh, it's of a lower value compared to Bombay. So why are you selling, say, maybe Bombay more expensive than this and they're all London dry gene? So I'd say it's the production. 
it goes down to production. Like, are you using actual botanicals or are you using flavors? Because for someone who is using actual botanicals, say for example, like for Bombay, Bombay uses actual botanicals. So for someone who is using actual botanicals, then of course their gin will be more expensive than someone who's just using uh, laboratory made flavors because their cost is lower in terms of production and the cost of this will be higher. And also production in terms of how is the distillation process. This is vapor infused that is uh, steeped. So that also will have, uh, will have a difference between how much time am I taking in producing my gin. If maybe in an hour I'm making a million liters and someone else in an hour, they are making uh, only 500 liters, then of course there'll be that difference, yeah. With, uh, with the rise of gin in the market, and especially gin mm -hmm. and tonic, and all these bars that are coming up being gin cocktails, what are your top four recommend recommendations of gin cocktails that anyone should try? Uh, my top four, first of all, it will be a gin martini. If you cannot make me a good gin martini, then yeah, we, we have a problem somewhere, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, also an actual, for me, I go back to the classics. Like if, if you're a gin, I would say if it's a gin bar, then some classics should be onto it. Okay. Because there is, you know, signatures are okay. I don't have a problem with signatures. But you, you need to have the classics that mostly people have kind of forgotten. And they're not actually made the right way. So one is, I would say it's the gin martini. Uh, the other one I would say is a gimlet. If you, yeah, a gimlet has to be there. And also either a Collins and different variations of tonic, oh, of gin tonics in terms of how to play around with the gin tonic. It doesn't have to be the standard way. It's just ice, tonic water, and gin. Yeah, and a, a slice of lemon there. So you can play around with fruits. You can make infusions of those. And also making the gin teas, it's a trend that I think it has never really catched up with the consumers here, the gin tea, the gin tea trend. So hopefully that is something that, mm, I do hope that it can get, it can get to a point where, uh, it can get to a point where we can have that gin trend, not in signatures, but going back to the classics, because that is what, I, I, that's my measure. If you cannot make your classics well, uh, then I, I wouldn't trust your signatures as much. Are you talking about tea with gin? Are you talking about tea like you you in you have a cocktail like black tea, lemon, and gin? Or you can do black? either. Yeah, it 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 can either be black tea, it can be chamomile because we have all these teas available here. Like I'd say, yeah, Kenya is blessed. We have the teas around here, so it's not a problem for us getting the teas. So it's infusing the different kind of teas, and you know, working around with them. Say the chamomile, the black tea. Uh, there's also, chamomile is my favorite for the gin teas, and the black tea, the Earl Grey black tea is also my favorite when it comes to making the gin teas. You should try purple tea. Purple tea is actually very interesting. Mm, I haven't had purple tea. Please send some to me. <laughs> I mean, it's a, okay, it's a variation of tea that turns purple when you add a bit of lemon juice. Yeah, then that would oh. also be perfect. Yeah, so it's like using hibiscus here. Yeah? Because the hibiscus, the hibiscus leaf will, leaves, or yeah, dry leaves will also give that effect. So it's about working around with the herbs that we have to create easier things as opposed to complicating something, but making, bringing back the gin fun. You know, that gin is not a too serious drink. Someone was it's asking, what, yeah? what's the perfect style for a star of Bombay? The perfect style for star of Bombay, of course, is the it, it, it has to be the gin and tonic, yeah. Okay. But for star of Bombay, I would say at least use a premium tonic to it, yeah. Okay. Use a premium tonic to it. It it enhances the flavor more. Okay. Yeah. Um, because they we, okay yeah. What about the Oxley gin? Just talk more about the Oxley gin. Is it in the market? Is it going to be available so, anytime? Okay. Oxley is not here in Kenya yet. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not in Kenya yet. Uh, it's more premium of, it's the most premium of the genes that come from the house of uh, Bombay, which is called Lava Stock House or, or Lava Stock Mill. 
it's Oxley and the production process of Oxley is totally different from the way Bombay is produced. So it uses a cold distillation process. So as opposed to heating it up, it's freezing the, it's more about freezing the botanicals to get flavor from them as opposed to heating them or passing vapor over them. So I would say totally different concept in terms of its production and also it's produced in small batches. So that might be the other reason why it's not here yeah, because yeah, we, we, I would say uh, if we find uh, uh, that there's the market for it here, yes, because it's something that you can find on duty free, but you wouldn't find it in our bars here. I mean, I think there's a market for it because if we are producing Procera, I see Manisha asking me about Procera. Yeah. It's the only Kenyan gin. Gin, then, yeah. But it's n it's produced here, but we sell it in London and Hong Kong and Shanghai. I mean, clearly because the market, we still have problems with the government. But, and it's an interesting gin, considering it's Kenyan and it's premium and it doesn't just yeah. appeal to the market here but it also appeals to various clientele now this other gin because the, it's still juniper but now the climate here is different from them it on their own as a whole. because we don't know when this will end and we don't know the impact it will have on us also as a business so yeah it will be there for sure but the when is yet because yeah we don't know we can't plan for the future for now. There's a question I asked uh, Nick. He was doing a mm -hmm. conversation about uh, Patron some yeah. time back. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be seeing any Patron perfectionist competition anytime soon in Kenya? Uh, I think let's give it like two years. Let us first grow no, like yeah, let us, it's, not, it's not fair that some of us are No, let us let us first grow Bacardi legacy and then now we can talk about the patron perfectionist. Because uh there's 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 also uh more training to patron perfectionists that needs to be there for people to understand what it's all about and what is needed for because the patron perfectionist as much as it's uh it's a cocktail competition. It's, it's, it's not the same way as the legacy is. They're, they're, the representation or the presentation behind it, the, uh, the training behind it is kind of different. Kind of different. So it's more detailed. I'll be like glad I'll that, it's here. I mean, I'll be one of the first oh? people to say I'll be glad to see Patron Perfection happen here. I mean, I've always been a big fan of tequila when I'm not drinking rum. For guys who don't oh. know, so... Yeah. Like I've said, it will be, but we also need, because we just took over Patron just uh, uh, last year. We took over Patron last year. So first of all, we need for Patron to, for people to understand. Patron is, uh, is part of the Bacardi portfolio. First, people need to understand that, that Patron is part of the Bacardi portfolio. Now, after understanding that, now we can go to the Patron perfectionist. Because, for example... You, you know that Patron is part of the Bacardi portfolio, but not everybody knows that. I walk into a bar and I'll be like, uh, I'm from Bacardi and so I'm here to talk to you about Patron and all that, but they'll be like, oh, Patron, no, this, that's not your product. Let's talk about Bacardi. So first of all, we need to change the mindset, the mindset of the bartenders and the mindset of uh, the business owners, which the business owners, them they know, but now yeah. the bartenders, as much as they are there, not every bartender knows that Patron is a Bacardi, uh, it's a Bacardi tequila. Okay. Yeah, so, so first of all, we need, we need that to sink in totally. Yeah, so we need to do more education on Patron. I don't know when we can start on that. I know you've already started the whole process, but uh, yeah. yeah, it'd be good for so, us to around it. So it's okay. So maybe for tomorrow's session, we can not for tomorrow is whiskey. Oh yeah, guys who are here, tomorrow is whiskey. Yeah, so tomorrow we're gonna do. <laughs> tomorrow we're gonna do whiskey, and we're so gonna be tomorrow is whiskey. whiskey. Yes, Scotch yeah. whiskey just to as a, as a starter. As a starter, so, yeah, yeah, just yeah, just, yeah, just, just we'll, we'll just talk about beers. Yeah. So if you have any questions about Scotch whiskey, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Um, any questions about gin, please as well. Please feel free to ask. 
Uh, if if there's have... any question or anything about Jane or anything about Bombay that uh, you'd like to understand or any other question like uh, Maniche, Nisawatu, we accept. <laughs> I'm here for you. I can see him saying just on a lighter note during this quarantine period, I'm sure there's an emergency of a very of many of very many speakeasy established of course there must be speakeasies ah, of, I think course, is... of course i'm sure i'm sure someone is someone is gaining a lot of or is profiting from all this someone who is sanitizing mm -hmm. people or making them i don't know get into their speakeasy i don't know how but i am sure it's happening that a hundred percent and i'm not talking about the canadians but actual actual premium product any last uh, words for guys out there in terms of so, wellness, yeah. especially on wellness you know that's something so in terms, okay in terms of wellness i know uh considering maybe how us guys live here not everyone has uh, you know not everyone has a garden even having a garden that is a story garden garden we know in ishamba but um okay in terms of wellness please uh, also cut try to cut off some time on social media because there's so much that is happening on social media and not everything is true. Okay, some are true, not everything is true, but just make sure that the news or the information that you have, it's fact as opposed to false and then you spread it. That is for your own well-being because you might end up getting depressed for something that you would have controlled if only you wouldn't have believed it. Uh, Try to get some fresh air. Fresh air helps, especially the, the, the fact that we are too much indoors. You know, it, it gives you what you call the, the cabin fever. You know, you, you start hallucinating for nothing. So just get some air. Get some air. Drink, not hair. Get some air. Drink some water. And if you can, go for a walk. Just, you know, not with people, but just... You know, just walk around where where you live, or just within where you live if you can, or just go outside your gate. Just take ten minutes walk, come back, just to clear your mind. And when you're going for your walk, don't take your phone with you. Yeah, it's not like you're walking and you're reading your Instagram, you're reading your Facebook. No, that's not helping you. You know, it's still pressing you. And also, uh, let's try to check up on each other. Let's see, check up on your colleagues check up on you because your colleagues you guys you work with these people you see them like 18 hours each day and now you're not seeing them and we also miss that um you know from working in a restaurant or in a bar or in a hotel there is that thing where you, you are always comfortable because there are always people around you but right now maybe you are home alone there are no people around you so it's say just Check on people, not checking on what they have updated, but actually calling or WhatsApping, like WhatsApping checking. someone. Exactly. Yeah, like have an actual conversation with someone. That will help in your mental well-being. Also, do some exercise. If you can't go for a walk, yeah, just move your seat. You know, do some push-ups. Uh, do do a jump or something. And also, just uh, in terms of you growing yourself. And I appreciate the guys who are watching this right now. Try and grow your knowledge. This is like an open book that you've been given. You can choose to go back with so much knowledge when you go back. And also, uh, there are online uh, masterclasses that you can get certificates from. You know, this is this is this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity where you you are learning for free. You are learning yeah. for free. Yeah. So I would say, in terms of profession, uh, professional growth, learn as much as you can. Learn as much as you can, and but don't overdo it again. Just don't force yourself to do too much. You don't have to. Do what you can. Because at the end of the day, we need you. We need your mental health better and well when you go back to work. We don't, we, we don't want to see guys got depressed because they overdid their learning or I don't know what happened to them and then they're looking more depressed than when they left. Have some fun and enjoy spending time with your family. That is, if, if where you're living, you have your family with you, enjoy them because I know our job entails so much work that we forget. We, we become strangers in our own homes. So at least for once, uh, we'll be home. We'll actually pay rent for being at home. <laughs> Someone, Lola is asking, which class do you think is preferably preferable for gin and tonic? I've seen bartenders use even wine glasses yeah. and low boards. Oh, there is the gin goblet. 
So yeah. the gin goblet, yeah, the gin goblet, uh, the one that I'm, I'm sure you've seen like the Bombay glasses or the Tankara glasses or the Hendrix glasses, those ones, yeah? So the gin goblet, that is the perfect stuff for, that's where the gin and tonic should go in. If not that, a highball, but not, not, not a lowball. A highball would also work, but not a lowball. Uh, Angel, I, I see you've joined. Thank you for joining in the conversation. Hi, I mean, if you're, Why are yeah. you late? <laughs> Angel, you, you, you're always late, but you're always late, as I say. One of the most amazing mm -hmm. tenders we have in Nairobi. So, Angel, since I can't see any comments, anything on your side? Uh, just more reading, more studying. I think education is everything. Education is everything, and you can never, you can never know everything, and you can never know too much. Yeah. So it's whatever you can find that you know that uh, uplifts your uplifts your knowledge. You know, just dig in. You never know where your interest will end up or what you will want to explore more, because not everyone will be say, a genius in gin or a genius in whiskey or a genius in rum, you can you pick a topic and run with it. Because I think like it's not about... You, you guys know I love my rum. So me and rum, we are tight. Rum and tequila, those, like, those are my favorite topics. But in terms of story, my favorite stories fall in whiskey because I find whiskeys have very interesting stories. Okay. Yeah, so it depends. They'll, you'll find something unique about each and every spirit that you will enjoy, uh, maybe either reading about it or telling people about it. I, I, I think for me, what I've learned so much, especially in the course of this whole COVID-19 issue, is that you never really stop learning and you never really get to a point where you can say you're the best. So, for example... Yeah. The whole course is based uh, on... One okay. minute, please. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know if, Igor, you're still, uh, you're still on the call because I wasn't seeing my, I wasn't seeing my comments be uh, before. Yay. Shout out to you. Okay. So I was yes. saying... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was saying the whole education uh, thing, you, you never stop to learn because if I look at uh, the WCT, for example, we have had to yeah. learn probably how many categories? We have had to learn about brandy. We have had to learn about rum, mezcal, tequila, G. I mean, like the entire, whatever is an alcohol product, basically. Think about it like that. And you have to learn it in 